In the past, women used reusable cloth diapers that were friendlier to the baby's skin and the environment. In the modern age, parents prefer disposable diapers because they're deemed to be more effective. Every good thing comes with consequences, and diapers are not an exception. They pose serious risks to children and the environment if not used carefully. A mother was mortified to see a two-centimeter screw protruding from the diaper of her wailing infant. After changing four-month-old Colobe, Tamara Dennis only discovered the jagged piece of metal after he started howling in pain. Following her frightening discovery, which she claims may have gone up his bottom, the 22-year-old mother of two is now pleading other parents to stop buying Pampers. Pampers declared that they were taking the problem extremely seriously and that they have rigorous quality controls in place when manufacturing. The Hassocks resident, Tamara, who provides full-time care for her partner, Dave Humphrey, who has epilepsy, said, I was really appalled when I discovered the screw. I was shocked because I couldn't believe it. It seems horrible and dangerous to me. All I could think about was what would have happened if the object had punctured his skin rather than the diaper cloth. A significant wound or infection may have resulted. The screw was very close to his bottom, so an operation might have been required to remove it if it had gotten there. After purchasing the 44-pack of Pampers Baby Dry at Sainsbury store in neighboring Hayward's Heath two weeks prior, Tamara found the two-inch long silver screw on Sunday. Klobe started wailing when she changed him, but she chose to ignore him until, after 15 minutes, the crying had turned into high-pitched screams. Tamara thought she'd mistakenly fastened her son's diaper too tightly, so she removed it to tighten it and was startled to see the screw poking through the fabric. The screw punctured the fabric and popped out while she examined the rest of the diaper for any further metal fragments. Milo's mother, Tamara, who also had a two-year-old son, said, We only bought them because we were already at Sainsbury's doing our shopping. I generally prefer boot snappies. She continued, I'd used 15 or 20 in the pack when it happened. However, after this, I will never again use Pampers, because if it happened to me, it could happen to anyone. Pampers should check to see if there's anything else in that batch of diapers, in my opinion. I would want to reassure the readers that the safety of babies is our first priority, and we've confirmed the young boy was not harmed, a Pampers spokesman stated. We're very sorry to hear of the difficulties this family's faced, and we're treating the situation seriously. We are in contact with the family to collect the diaper for inquiry, and we have strong quality standards in place during our manufacturing process. Actually, this wasn't the first case of its kind, as parents were shocked when they discovered something unbelievable under their child. Even at the age of five months after her quick birth, Gabriella Gates is still quite small. Michelle and Lee Gates, the proud British parents of this gorgeous little girl, are overjoyed with their new baby daughter. Of course, parents are parents, but parents of prematurely born children have special needs. Their immune systems are typically still weak, because they didn't have enough time to fully develop in the womb because they were delivered early. They may require the utmost tenderness and care when being handled. Lee and Michelle were engaged in that activity. While out shopping, Michelle picked up two large packs of Pampers diapers from her local supermarket because they were about to run out. An average infant uses a surprisingly large number of diapers, and it can be challenging to keep up. To Michelle's horror, the baby's diapers she thought would be safe ended up the cause of a horrible nightmare. Since the new diaper packs were introduced, Gabrielle has been fussy and has been sobbing frequently. That's not like her. She was usually a happy baby. Lee and Michelle also expressed their worries. What possibly could be ailing their small daughter, they wonder. Who would have thought to link diapers at first? Perhaps teething at the time? Sometimes the teething process for a baby can be very unpleasant. If you can't remember, ask your parents about it. Probably, like me, you cried. Furthermore, there's no quick treatment other than patience and the appropriate care. Every baby must experience it eventually. But one morning, while she was putting Gabriella's diaper on, she noticed something peculiar. As she was changing the diaper, her palm unintentionally contacted the soft interior of the diaper, which is always in contact with the child's most private places. The jagged piece of material was much darker than the surrounding soft white cloth, which was much paler. She looked closer and, to her amazement, saw what was in her daughter's diaper was actually a piece of metal. 
The object had edges and was firmly placed in the middle of the diaper. How could it have gotten there anyway? It was, without a doubt, included in the diaper's packaging. Michelle knew right away what was making her baby so cranky lately. Additionally, she could undoubtedly see numerous horrific red shapes when she looked down. She was enraged because her tiny child had been hurt by the metal splinter. Michelle reasoned that since she'd been crying so much that week, it couldn't just be this diaper. Since she spoke with her husband, Lee, to discuss the complete package, a Pampers, there was a ton of diapers like that, likewise that contained metal shavings and rust traces in the soft, fluffy pulp area that's supposed to absorb all liquids. In the section of the diaper that's meant to be the softest, metal components have no place. According to Gabriella's father, Lee, the metal was hidden inside the cotton of Gabriella's personal space. It's very terrible. The most terrifying aspect was the metal's ripped edges, which had been scraping against the girl's bottom and had left apparent scrapes and marks. They were conscious that they needed to find out if their daughter was okay, even if they were still unaware of how the metal got into the diapers. Her anxious parents took her to the emergency room of the hospital so they could see a doctor. The fragments in the diapers that they had brought to show the doctor what had happened astounded him just as much as it astounded them. Where did they get them from? Everything appeared to be where the diapers were, as if a cog in the wheel accidentally dropped them during manufacturing. The fact that the diapers were contaminated is evident. They thoroughly examined Gabriella's bottom, much to the relief of her parents, and found no embedded metal. She did, however, have a lot of scrapes and cuts, and because she was born prematurely, sepsis was anticipated to have developed. Her blood could have been quite tainted by the unclean metal, which would be harmful for a newborn of her size. Gabriella was fortunate enough to avoid that area, and after receiving treatment for her wounds, she was allowed to return to her parents' home. As soon as she was no longer wearing the bad diapers, her mood immediately altered. She had beautiful diapers wrapped around her bottom once again although they were of a completely different variety. She was back to being the same happy toddler. However, Michelle and Lee started to become upset when they got home. After a week of using diapers from that box, just think about how miserable their daughter must have been. How many more missing metal items were there? They were happy that their daughter was safe and that nothing had happened to her, but they knew that they couldn't just let things be. They immediately contacted Proctor and Gamble to tell them of the incident. Lee says to the reporters, we don't want remuneration. We want to know what happened so that an open investigation may be conducted to determine the issue and make sure that no additional children have been harmed. Otherwise, they might not have the same luck the next time. The company apologized for the unfortunate circumstances in its reaction and announced that a thorough investigation had been launched. The metal shards Lee and Michelle found in their daughter's pampers were proven to have come from the factory by them. A portion of the machine had been changed just before it stopped for periodic maintenance. The box of diapers they had bought was the first to leave the line after the replacement. The diapers' eventual placement in stores was a terrible coincidence. They claimed to have checked every other item going off the line in the first few minutes after the machine was restarted, but they'd not found any additional contaminated diapers. Michelle thought it was absurd that the company didn't recall the entire batch, or at least post a formal internet warning about the risks associated with this batch. How could they be sure that all diapers were unaffected? On their website and in other media, they state that safety is their first priority. They cooperate with families from all over the world who approve their products and provide real-time feedback, and each production line purportedly undergoes thousands of quality checks. However, Michelle didn't believe they were truly interested in what she had to say. They were particularly surprised by the multinational silence over the issue, including its refusal to offer even a 20-pound payment for the diaper packs. A factory tour and a donation to the charity of Lee and Michelle's choosing were offered to them, but they declined both. Then they went back to the store where they'd originally bought the problematic diapers. It turns out that just a month before, a woman had gone to complain after finding a full razor blade in one of the diapers she'd purchased there. A razor blade! but once more they don't apologize. Nothing was done by this company to prevent it from happening again. In order to continue spreading the word, Michelle and Lee posted about their experience on Facebook and Reddit, along with pictures of the diapers and their daughter. Others who read it, especially other parents, were just as shocked as they were. The posts became viral after receiving numerous shares. 
Naturally, the episode generated a lot of media attention, and Procter & Gamble was requested by the media to provide a statement. You can ignore one set of parents, but not the entire media circus and its audience. The company initially refused to respond since they were still investigating the incident, but they have since asked Michelle to return them to the remaining shipment of diapers so they can conduct a more thorough investigation. When the investigation is over, they will return to provide a statement. Gabriella's parents sought out as many parents as they could connect with. They wanted to caution parents to check the diapers they use on their children and not to take anything at face value. They also desired more research into the circumstances surrounding this incident. This incident that the current plant safety standards are not stringent enough because it appears that this is not an isolated incident. For Michelle and Lee, it was a comfort that the incident garnered attention on social media and the fury of other parents. It did, however, have a drawback in that not everyone who saw the letters shared the same sympathy. Some people have even claimed that the parents put the metal parts in the diapers themselves in order to receive payment from Procter & Gamble. Just the idea. However, the majority of people were happy that young Gabriella was unharmed and worried about her. And some even claimed to have discovered comparable parts in the diapers they'd bought. They were eventually located, although it took a second look, and they valued the caution. I suppose the lesson here is not to put all your faith in major corporations.